here today here at uh, Boundary Park is Mark Cass, the assistant coach at, uh, at uh, Oldham. Mark, Charleston are unbeaten in all competitions so far this season and of course they have disposed of professional opposition in the past so you won't be taking them lightly. No, not, not, not whatsoever. Um, obviously, you know, as a player myself, during my time at Battle, you know, I got beat by, uh, by an amateur side as well. So I know from first hand, you know, that it's not going to be an easy game. Um, and, you know, Charleston have beat Jillsbury in previous Challenge Cup, so we know, we know we're going to be under the pump. And they are a, a quite a good side and they're doing extremely well in their respective league at the moment. Yeah, I mean, obviously, again, going back to myself, I've played against them this year, um, obviously on the amateur side for us at Old Boys. So I know, you know, I know a bit about them, you know, I'm obviously being from Leeds, you know, I'm, I'm quite a, a local lad to, to, the, to the team. Um, you know, they're, they're going really well in their, in their competitions. Yeah, and of course, um, it's quite easy uh, for professional sides to be, to get caught out, you know, because they get a little bit complacent, and I'm sure that you've spoken to your lads about that. Yeah, you know, complacency is the, is the worst thing you can ever happen, and I think we've showed them the, the, the respect that they deserve, um, you know, and we'll go out and play with that respect, um, and, you know, we'll, I think we'll just have enough to come through. All of them are playing out of their skins at the moment, you know, the, the top of the Northern Rail, and they beat some good sides in Widnes, uh, Unsuck last week. I went to watch them last week and, you know, they're a big unit, a good set. So we know how tough it's going to be today, but our lads are up and ready for it. And they're not taking you that lightly because uh, the key positions in the side, like the half-backs, hooking roll, certainly loose forward, um, they're actually playing their regular players. They've, they've actually moved one or two other players about and brought some fringe players in, but in the major positions, they, you know, they're having to strengthen up there. Well, they can't really afford, afford to go under strength. They've got to go with the best side, really, Dave, because, you know, we're a great side. We, we, unbeaten. we, we haven't been beaten 22 games, which it, it might be amateur, but it's a big achievement. And uh, any, any coach that took that at the start of the year to go and beat, and it's amazing what, what them guys have done in there, mate. We did actually come to our game at Drigg last week. Right. Uh, me and Tony Benson came and, uh, you know, watched the game. It, it, it was a very good game, you know. Drigg, Drigg sort of like edged the first half, but, you know, Chelsea come out in the second half and showed what a, what a class side they are by you know overturning it and running probably 30 odd points in the second half. Yeah, it was a, a great second half performance from Chelsea, and, and you know, did you learn anything from that? You know, from watching that game in terms of who might be able to prize open your defence? Yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, there's there's a number of players. You know, you can go to probably you know Craig Miles. You know, being an ex-professional, obviously, I've played against him, so I know a little bit about him. Um, but there's there's players all over the park. You know, there, there's some very good players in in the amateur side. So you know, you can't just look at one player. You've got to look at the full side. Charleston is strong and fit, Gordy, as as you well know, and we've seen that in the games that we've watched. But surely a professional side uh, should be even stronger and fitter with the use of better facilities, obviously. Do you think that aspect will have, will have a bearing on the game? Not really. I, I don't see it as it does because it's, it's 80 minutes rugby out there and they probably train three hours more than us a week, which it's not a lot. And uh, the guys at Charleston train and they've trained like they haven't trained before. They've been, we've got them fit, they're training out the skins and they're ready to go today. We've got to play at the same standards we played against Widnes um, and show the respect that show the respect to Charleston. You know, and hopefully that will come, you know, we'll come out on top on that. The players who don't have a professional background, background will relish the thought of actually playing here at a professional stadium this afternoon. It's brilliant for them. That's what I keep saying to them, Dave. Even before we set off, you've got to enjoy the day. Every minute of it from setting off to playing to the after and just give it your best shot, you know, control ball. And we'll be in with a shout today. We'll be there and thereabouts. We've got to out infuse them, like you say. They're probably bigger, stronger, but if we out infuse them and get into the faces uh, I'm sure we can do a job today and for them young lads what haven't played against a professional outfit before it's going to be a great day for them I'm sure if everything goes to plan there could be a shock on the cards couldn't there well it's happened before you, you know you, you could ask uh, Jubilee and Andy Fisher for that we've been there and turned them over nobody expected that but you know we showed that on his day and it's a big thing to say but I think we're a better side than, than what actually played when we played Jewsborough I'm sure because your record in the league speaks for itself. I mean, and you've had some marvellous performances, and, and and I'm sure that things can happen. And I hope it does for Charleston's point of view, for you and the lads and everything, because it'll be a wonderful achievement. So all the best for this afternoon. Thanks a lot, Dave. Cheers. Here we are at Boundary Park then for the Carnegie Challenge Cup 
round three tie, Oldham Rough Yeds versus Shalston Rovers. We'll go through the Oldham Rough Yeds team first. It's number one, Paul O'Connor. Number 21, Lucas Onyango. Number three, Danny Halliwell. Number 19, Craig Littler. Number five, Lee Greenwood. The halfbacks, six, James Coyle. Seven, Thomas Coyle. And the forwards, 14, Richard Merville. Number nine, Gary Sykes. Number 25, Luke Menzies. Number 11, David Allen. 12, Tommy Golden. 23, Chris Baines. And the substitutes for Oldham this afternoon. Wayne Kerr is at 16. Jamie Ianson at 10. Robert Roberts at 13. And Neil Rolden at 18. Fantastic achievement for Charleston Rovers. It's number one, Lee Maskell. Number two, Dale Ferris. Number three, Gareth Davis. Number four, Dale Potter. Number five, Brad Chatfield. Number six, Tom Wandless. Number seven, Lee Bettison. And the forwards for Charleston this afternoon, James Lockwood at 16, Carl Saville at nine, Bart Thompson at 10, Sean Emblem at 11, Jonathan Waddell at 12, and Craig Miles at 13. The substitutes for Charleston, eight, Andy Booth. 14, Tommy Crowther. Chris Bingham is at 17 and Carl Spencer is at 19. And just entering the field now are Oldham Roughheads. And as we say, this is the Carnegie Challenge Cup round three tie here at Boundary Park, Oldham. Shalston already on the field and it looks like they're setting up to receive the ball. So they will take the first set of six to the Oldham side. And we'll see very shortly what the Oldham side have got in defence and what Charleston can do with the wind behind their backs. Will they use the wind? Which I think will be a big factor in today's performance. The physical stature of the Oldham side is bigger than that of the Charleston, but what's under the shirt matters. And Miles receives and takes it up, first hit. Into the tackle quickly was Luke Menzies. And that's the first penalty. Richard Merville not allowing Craig Miles to regain his feet. Thomas Wandless then. Just manages to scrape the ball into touch. It's just a, a bit difficult to see which way the wind's actually blowing. Charleston under no illusions that today's performance has got to be immense to take any spoils from this game. That's Bart Thompson taking it up strong. Saville then takes it to the right hand side where James Lockwood drives forward just over halfway. Saville again taking it to the short side and just nipping the ball into touch. That's a nice settling first set from Charleston. So they've moved up the field nice and steadily and the scrum will take uh, place just on the 20 metre line. Oldham feed. It'll be uh, Thomas Coyle to feed the scrum. And that's the first penalty to Oldham. And that's uh, popped into touch by Thomas Coyle. That's a good hit from Miles and from Thompson. Lockwood working hard in the centre of the field with Sean Emblem. That's a great hit. Absolutely superb hit from Miles once more. Miles is the uh, is the player on the Charleston side that has got the experience, the professional experience. He's been in this situation before. That's gotta be it's gotta be the first knock-on, I would have thought. 
Yes, the referee just showing that uh, the ball was knocked forward. That should be a Shalston head and feed. It is. So early signs that the conditions will hinder passing. Cover, Lucas, cover. And that's Maskell. Maskell taking it on. Maskell tackled. There by Chris Baines out of the scrum pretty quickly, the loose forward. So Saville in at acting half back. Saville comes to centre circle. Oh. Bart Thompson did a good juggling act there. Bettinson and Saville. Saville looking to get Emblem going. Emblem coming up this left hand side. Savile going to take it back just to centre field Miles Miles can't get away from Thomas Wandless Thomas Wandless trying to go through it's just not on for him so Coyle come in it's Bettinson Bettinson just gets the oh unlucky from Lee Bettinson it didn't play the player didn't play for that. It did come back off him, but Bettinson just couldn't pick it up. Knock on. So it's an handover. So most of the play is taking place in the Oldham half of the field. And that's Baines. Baines taking it forward but met again by Miles and Miles is in once more having a tremendous first 10 minutes Craig Miles another bad pass from the acting halfback oh Lee Maskell picked that up extremely well well played Lee Maskell And that's Tommy Golden in there. And this is James Lockwood. Lockwood had a spell with Wakefield last year. Did extremely well. Just put a little bit of timber on this year. And the extra bit of weight that he's got has made him a difficult player to put down. And that's absolutely great work from Charleston. Just up to that right-hand side of the field. Five metres from the line. Saville receives and now passes out to Wandless. And what can Wandless do? And gets it away, but... The pass went astray. And Potter picks it up. Wandless again looking to put the ball across the field. And Gareth Davis is in. So it's a good kick chase. Most of the play, as I say, in the half of the Oldham Ruffyheads. They're finding it quite difficult to get out of their own half. Enthusiastic play. Good tackle from Thomas Wandless on Lee Greenwood. Oldham coming forward, but Savile's in there, and so is Miles once more. That's Coyle. Coyle nowhere to go. Gary Sykes then. Puts it out to James Coyle, and James Coyle puts the ball downfield. And that's Dale Ferris who brings it away. So nothing between the sides at the moment. Bettinson gets it away to Maskell, and that's another penalty. And that's another penalty, so lack of, in, lack of discipline on the part of the Oldham players. That's a better kick. And it's Lockwood. Lockwood once more taking Shalston forward just over the halfway line. Saville in at acting half back looking for Bettinson and probably trying to push the ball a little bit wider and looking for the inside pass. Well met by Baines. Just nipping back to the short side, Miles, Miles looking to try and get away and does so! Oh, 
Miles having an absolutely outstanding game at the moment. Savile taking it back to the right-hand side. Lockwood not expecting it. But this is sometimes what uh, what Shelston do. They tend to go to the right-hand side, even when the better option is to the left. And I think Bettinson did actually tell Carl Savile about that. So the Coyle brothers linking there from the scrum. But Emblem and Wandless in to just snuff that out. This is the wingman on Yango, apparently. Very, very quick and nimble on his feet. So Alden once more. Just trying to come down the centre of the field where I feel Charleston are quite strong. Got a big set of forwards. This time they're going to try and push it wider. They do, but what a great tackle from Potter. He ably assisted from Wandless there. Again, they're coming on the short side, trying to get the numbers. And they have done, they've got through this time. It looks like the first score, is it? Onyango's going to go over. So, Charleston just caught napping on the short side. Great little quick hands move and Onyango goes over. And I must say that Charleston, apart from that, really have given a good account of themselves over the 15 minutes. But good quick hands there from Oldham. Sees Onyango takes the first score of the afternoon. So Danny Hall Halliwell entrusted with the duties of kicking goals and the wind just playing a part which sometimes it does and just as he was about to strike the ball it rolled off the kicking tee relatively easy shot I suppose that will give Oldham a little bit of confidence because apart from the little break down that short side they've had not much to cheer about I think Charleston have been immense in defence, certainly in the middle of the field. But just caught napping on that short side. So, six points to nil in the favour of the professional side. So, off we go again. Coyle just passes the ball on but what a great tackle from Sean Emblem this is on Yango the try scorer just giving his forwards a breather just bringing it to centre field about 30 metres out that's another strong tackle from Lockwood Miles is in there and so is Waddell great shot from Bart Thompson just backing up Miles's low tackle Coyle then puts the ball into the bottom corner it's just going to go touching goal yes it's just gone touching goal so there'll be a restart on the 20 metre line Savile will get Lockwood Lockwood with the ball tries to get through there but Strong tackle from Baines. Putting a big effort into his defence is Baines. Bit of a gang tackle there. David Allen, former Wigan. Bettinson. Bettinson then gets it across to Emblem. Elbum gets it away to Gareth Davis. Dangerous player, Davis, if he can get some room to work in. This is Craig Miles, Craig Miles, making the Oldham defence work. This is Paul O'Connor, Paul O'Connor bringing the ball away, steps inside one.
And that's Wayne Kerr that's on the field. Sorry, I beg your pardon, that was uh, Craig Littler that had come in from the centre just to help his forwards out. Good work from Potter. Oh, Coyle, nice little short ball. And it's a good job that, uh, that Chatfield got his hand onto that. Because if the ball had found its way into Onyango's hands, I think that would have been the second score of the afternoon for that young man. However, Oldham with the feed at the scrum. Thomas Coyle to put the ball in. James Coyle. James Coyle looks to O'Connor. O'Connor tackled by Davis. And Bettinson. And that's Luke Menzies taking the ball hard and strong and taking it forward. Gary Sykes, just the little inside ball, but look at Savile and Bart Thompson working around the Rook area. Coyle then to his brother Thomas. Thomas Wandless just trying to grab hold of him. On Yango, and Yango gets the ball. He's nimble, he's quick on his feet. Yep, I think the crowd was shouting for a forward pass. They obviously saw something that the touch judge saw. And that was that the ball went in a forward direction. Therefore, Charleston will get the head and feed at the scrum. So, six points to nil. It's still the score in Oldham's favour. That's Chatfield. But they're quickly out of the scrum. Tommy Golden and Chris Baines were quickly out of the scrum there just to assist in the tackle. Jonathan Woodell, centre field, about 35 metres out. Bart Thompson picked him up, but not above the horizontal. Therefore, everything's all right. Savile to Lockwood. Lockwood trying to use his strength to break the Oldham line, but it's good tackling from David Allen. Savile just tries a little dart from acting half back. Wandless now receives. And the ball's gone up in the air. But the Oldham player takes it extremely well. That's Sean Emblem. In with the tackle with Thompson. Good tackle from Thomas Wandless, ball and all there, well done. Absolutely brilliant, Baines is putting himself about a bit, both in defence and carrying the ball. Sykes again. And uh, young Thomas Wandless there just received a knock to his shoulder. I think he's probably just took a bang on it. A chance for uh, some water to be brought on the field just where he's been attended to. So a little tap into touch. Sykes. Sykes looking for David Allen. Sykes again in an acting half back looking to go to Coyle but sees Baines. Baines, as I say, he's been in most things this afternoon. Probably go to Coyle this time, will he? Yes, Coyle using his brother. And it's a quick move outside and it's a knock on. So good quick hands from Oldham but the final pass 
just going slightly in front of the man, not being able to take it cleanly. No advantage to Shelston, so the referee will bring the scrum 20 metres in field. Bettinson to Maskell. Maskell will try and take the ball forward. They are quickly out of the scrum, especially Baines. Saville then. Saville looking to feed. Miles. Miles taking it forward. But good defence from Oldham. Strong. Jamie Ianson, he's onto the field now. So Saville looking to try and dance his way into space, but Richard Merville, he took care of that and he still gets the ball away. Well done, it's, it's Davis. So just short of the halfway line. Saville gets the kick away, O'Connor is the person that picks it up, comes back in field. Miles enthusiastic in the tackle, a little bit over enthusiastic. Just went around the head area. Referee just gives Oldham the penalty. Oldham starting to establish themselves in the game now, as you would expect the professional side to do. Coyle looking for Richard Merville just trying to pull the Charleston defence in looking to get J looking to get Thomas Coyle on the outside and he has done and the inside ball was deemed to go forward by referee Mr Robinson Chatfield sorry that was Ferris the other winger that brought it away early on Saville Saville looking to come back to the left hand side of the field Yeah, some, some big hits by the Oldham forwards. Certainly Ianson in there. And Richard Merville. It's a physical presence of the Oldham side which are, are not allowing Charleston to gain any yardage. Thomas Wandless looking to put the ball downfield. It looks a good kick downfield as well. Just a little bit too strong. The wind just helping it along, but at least it's turned the forwards of Oldham around and they've got to come back and start again from within their own 20. This is Baines. Baines taking it forward. So Coyle, Coyle looking to try and hit the man in the short angle, which was Danny Alliwell, but Wandless was in there with, with Emblem, and Emblem's into the tackle again with Craig Miles. Yes, it's a penalty. So it's a quick play of the ball. David Allen taking it forward. But runs into Emblem. El Emblem puts him down. Oldham probably looking to try and push the ball to the left-hand side where it looks as if they've got numbers. And it's going to go long by the looks of it. It is. Coyle. Yes, but there's been some bad handling from Oldham. And I don't specifically think you can put that down to the windy conditions they are professional footballers and with with all due respect the ball should go in front of the man rather than behind him 
So still six points to nil. And Charleston certainly giving a good account of themselves. Certainly in defence. They're having to work extremely hard. And this is Maskell. Maskell taking it forward. Dave Allen's out of the scrum quickly. This is Tommy Crowther. Tommy Crowther going forward. And he'll make the Oldham forwards work, that's for sure. Lockwood. Lockwood going forward. And there's four Oldham players in there to pull him to the ground. And Saville. Saville looking to dart off again. And Wandler's taking the ball here. Oh, and almost breaking through. Almost breaking through. And I felt that Dave Allen just took him around the head area, but gets away with it. But that was unlucky. That's brave work from the fullback. Went down onto the ball. Close attention from Potter. That's on Yango that brings the ball away. The try scorer. This is O'Connor once more, just scrambling away from acting half-back. Ianson taking the ball up, but look at Emblem. And Tommy Crowther just helping. The difference between the two sides at the minute, that's a good hit from Thomas Wandless. Great hit, took him upstairs. He was the guy that knocked him earlier on. And Coyle looking to get on Yango away, but great cover tackle. And Shalston. Yep, I don't think Oldham realised that it was the fifth and last tackle, so it's an handover. Tommy Crowther taking the ball up. Sykes in at the tackle. So Lockwood taking it forward, taking it up, but it's a great hit that from Wayne Kerr. And Golden. Lee Bettinson gets it out. Gets it to Gareth Davis. Gareth Davis tries to get away from one, but can't get away from Kerr. And it's a penalty. So Miles, Miles taking it forward. Only knows one way to go, Craig Miles. That's Bettinson. Bettinson to Crowther. Crowther steps inside the attention of Sykes. Bettinson looking to Thomas Wandless. Thomas Wandless, great ball. To Chatfield, it goes backwards. Emblem, can Emblem get through here? What can Sean Emblem do? Oh, my goodness. Has he scored? Oh, it's a penalty, a double movement. That could have been a fantastic score for Charleston. But all due respect, as, as much as Sean Emblem actually took the ball on the fly and almost broke through, it was an absolutely fantastic try-saving tackle. Didn't quite manage to see who it was. But whoever it was there has saved Oldham from... Six points, great cover tackle. And that certainly sparked some life into the supporters in the main stand. Coyle. And that's Ianson taking the ball forward. Coyle once more gets away and gets the ball onto Littler. Littler pops the ball, just chips it over. Maskell, is he there? Yes, he is. But just can't get away. And the touch judge is on. Yeah, I think Coyle just had a little pop at him. The touch judge did see it. Yeah, I think the difference at the moment, certainly when Oldham have got the ball, is when the Charleston defenders come in, there's not numbers in the tackle, and they're allowing Oldham to play the ball a little bit quicker. 
and it's certainly the reverse when Charleston have the ball there's numbers in the tackle and certainly the play of the ball is a little bit slower so it doesn't give chance for Charleston to get anything moving quickly but certainly a lack of discipline from Oldham's point of view in that situation Savile gets it to Lockwood. Lockwood takes it forward. Savile once more hits Wandless. Wandless to Crowther. Crowther hit by Golden, but rolls around him, just spins off him. Takes some putting down. The young kid comes back, and it's Waddell. Lockwood looking for the ball and gets it again. Absolutely wonderful play from Lockwood, really taking it to the Oldham forwards. Bettinson, what will Bettinson do? Looks to get it back to Miles, Miles to Lockwood. Lockwood looking to take the ball forward, so they're just on 20 metres, centre field. Which way will they go? They'll come out to Thomas Wandless. Thomas Wandless a little kick forward, but it's just a little bit too strong. It's a good idea certainly just got to take the weight off the kick when you've got a wind as strong as this one behind you Onyango comes in from the wing to try and get some yardage in the centre of the field but Lockwood's there and this is O'Connor coming in from full back just picking it up on the fly they've got to halfway line in two Sykes looking to move the ball to the left it's Coyle Coyle little drop off there to Goulden This is Kerr, Kerr taking it forward. And Coyle snuffed out, we're on the fifth and last tackle. So Charleston have been immense in defence and a lack of discipline from them there. Absolute a sin really when they defended so well for five tackles to give another six plays to Oldham in this area of the field. Coyle, looking to his brother, gets the ball away to Allen. Can Allen manage to sneak over? He can't. So Coyle once more, has he seen something? It's a step, is he going to go under the sticks? He is. Well, it's unfortunate, Charleston have defended extremely well, but I just feel that a lack of experience there just gave Oldham another set of six in a dangerous area of the field and they did capitalise on it James Coyle was the person that just took on the Charleston defence quick and nimble of feet and just went under the sticks and it's given Littler another easy chance to add the extras So the extras were added and 12 points to nil in the favour of Oldham. So Craig Miles gets the game underway once more. That's uh, definitely a knock on. I think sometimes when you've got um, a 
rugby field markings on the top of football markings I think sometimes the lines confuse people and it certainly looked that way to me certainly no call from either player there and they just got in a little bit of a mess so can Shelston get possession in a good area of the field and maybe put some pressure on the Oldham side it would be nice for the amateur side to get some points that's Woodell Woodell just on the 20 metre line I think the Oldham side are very good and clever at the moment in slowing the play the ball down it's a great drive from Bingham back to the right hand side of the field and Gareth Davis is in what a score oh that's wonderful and absolutely fantastic for the amateur side they worked it it's been a set piece that they've actually used in numerous uh, games in their respective leagues and they've caught quite a lot of teams out with it that's a great kick from Bettison and a superb follow up from Davis managed to regather and plonk the ball down just to the right hand side of the sticks so 12 points to 4 wonderful for the travelling supporters of Charleston to see as well what can Dale Ferris do it would be great if Dale Ferris could just pop the extras over just being one full score between the two teams just a nice little chip oh excellently converted almost a sand wedge of a shot 12 points to 6 and I, I, in fairness I don't think it's anything more than what Charleston deserve I've played well and certainly the mistake from the kickoff. I think it was Ianson that dropped the ball over his own line. Certainly uh, gave Charleston the field position to go for that score. Maskell gathers. Waddell takes it. Bettinson in at acting half back. And that's Ferris trying to bring the ball away. So added enthusiasm into the Charleston ranks now, thanks to that score from Davis. Saville gets it away to Crowther. This is certainly a Charleston spell. Thomas Wandless trying to get the ball downfield. Looking for a 40 20 as well, and almost got it. That's Maskell up. Good kick, Chase. Well, well played, Charleston Rovers. Good kick, good chase. On Yango, what can he do? If he gets away, it can be difficult. So, Charleston certainly up and into the faces of the Oldham players. Not liking it either. That's Baines. Well met. Well it as well. And a penalty, so again, lack of discipline. Walking forward. So a little bit, shall we say, the feathers of the Oldham Ruffheads are being ruffled. And again, a penalty for lifting. Lifting his legs up in the air, which all rugby players these days know that that's an offence and a penalty will be given so it's no good arguing the fact and Charleston have decided to take a shot at goal Charleston will have the wind obviously in their faces for the second half but haven't they performed magnificently in this first half and it's a kick that's gone straight through the centre of the uprights 12 points to 8 absolutely magnificent performance from the blue of Charleston and I'm sure that coach Tony Benson will have something to say to his players about the lack of discipline that they're showing Well picked up from Maskell and given to Woodell. Woodell takes it forward. 
Ayansen's in at the tackle. Uh, three men in once more. Golden was one of them. Just got up off that. And it's Bingham. Bingham taking it forward. Looking to try and come round to this side. Crowther. Crowther will go forward. He'll get away from Baines. Miles. Ma round the shoulder this time. It's hurt Craig Miles, but I'm I'm almost sure that it was round the shoulder. I don't think that uh, he actually took the head. But he's a tough cookie. He'll get up and, and ride that. Bingham again. Bingham taking it forward. But that's a good hit from Wayne Kerr. Tommy Crowther once more taking it forward. But Littler the centre. That's Maskell kicking the ball down but straight. Oh, he's took it well though. Extremely well. When almost you thought that there was going to be a mistake made. He actually dived to his, his right and took the ball before it hit the ground. Great piece of work from the wingman. And that's half-time here at Boundary Park. The score, Oldham 12, Charleston 8. Just as tempers seem to flare in the centre of the field, that could be a little bit of frustration from the Oldham side and certainly a bit of over-enthusiasm from the Charleston side because Charleston have done extremely well here. 12 points to weight against the professional side. Wonderful score from Gareth Davis from a fantastic kick from Bettinson. They did set that up. It has been a set piece and a set play from uh, previous games that Charleston have played and, and it's worked wonders. It certainly worked wonders today. It sparked the players up. It sparked the supporters up and it's really put us in for a fantastic game in the second half. So just to remind you of the score... Oldham Ruffyheads 12, Charleston Rovers 8, and we'll see you very shortly for the second half. Teams have taken the field for the second half, and I'm sure the coaches of the two sides will have actually told the team what they want from them. Certainly Charleston's coaches will have been saying, let's have a little bit more of the same, and I'm sure Tony Benson will have been saying to his Oldham side that we need to cut down on the mistakes that we're making and certainly um, not give as many penalties away and give the opposition field position that's a, that's a good afternoon and welcome to Boothie there as he's just been knocked quite cleanly on his backside but that's a great to recovery from him went low and hard into Goulden's midriff so play is in centre field with Jamie Ianson. Thomas Coyle puts the kick downfield and it's not going to go to touch and that's a great tackle from Onyango Chase Thomas Coyle's kick he really is quick this lad Maskell didn't have the time that he would have liked and he certainly didn't get the time that he would have got in a normal amateur contest was quite up quickly was Onyango so Charleston are going to find it difficult with the wind in the faces to get out of their own 20. That's Lockwood. What a great 10, 15 metre dart from Lockwood there. This is Booth. Booth taking the ball forward. And he's tackled extremely well by the Oldham forwards. That's the difference in the tackling department so far. Bettinson rushed to get the kick away, but he does. And it's just held up a little bit. But Onyango, the speed merchant and the first try scorer of the afternoon, takes it forward. Bit of a difficult man to put down. And I think that's basically got to be the order of the day for Charleston. And that is to try and keep turning the Oldham side around and make them come back up the field. This is the try scorer. Coyle drops Tommy Golden off. But Saville and Booth in at the tackle. 
as the snow starts to come down once more in Oldham. Coyle, Coyle takes it forward. It's hit the Charleston player on the head, Thomas Wandless. Can he get to it? O'Connor knocks on. This is Lockwood. Lockwood picks it up. Can Lockwood go forward? That was a chance for Charleston if the ball had have bounced a little bit more kindly. But Saville gets the ball away. Gareth Davis, Gareth Davis looking for his winger. What's he doing here? A little inside. That was almost a, a circus pass. Crikey, in a situation like that, Ferris should have just gone infield and low and Charleston would have still have had possession in the 20 metre area, but never mind. A bit of a circus backdoor pass gives Oldham the possession back. So exciting times and exciting things here at Boundary Park. Only four points between. That's Coyle putting the ball down. It's not a 40-20, is it? I thought he was just outside the... F no, it's actually a 40-20. So Oldham using the wind, as I thought that Charleston may have done in the first half. Excellent kick from Coyle. So great field position for Oldham to take advantage of. Coyle looking to get the ball to Littler. But Charleston somehow managed to hold him up in the tackle and stop him from playing the ball quickly. Sorry, Alliwell is it? Beg your pardon. Yes, Alliwell three. Bettinson to put the ball in. Small stoppage of play. Looks like a perhaps a blood bin. So Thomas Coyle, it's James Coyle actually that's got to leave the field. I presume it's a, a blood bin. So Bettinson puts the ball in. That's Chatfield. Brad Chatfield. And that's Bingham. Bingham trying to get his uh, side as far forward as possible so that the kick can go as far down the field as possible and turn this Oldham side around. This is Booth. Booth taking it forward. Big hit. But the lad stood up to it well. Thomas Wandless looking to put the ball downfield and does so. Against the wind, it's a fine kick. It just didn't roll off the point of the ball which would have been nice oh great hit from Potter Potter puts O'Connor straight down onto the deck and on Yango from first man but there's some enthusiasm in the Charleston side they're certainly not giving up the fight Oldham certainly know that they've been in a game this afternoon and that's Saville and Miles in the tackle as Sykes the Hooker for Oldham tries to get his team rolling. Looking to go to the right-hand side of the field. Short ball coming in on the angle. Can't get through the Charleston line. That's Lockwood. And that's a, a kick from Sykes. But Gareth Davis takes it well. 
under pressure and that's Ferris Ferris trying to just make some quick yardage from the acting half back area Bettinson looking for Waddell and that's a big hit from Richard Merville and he's took a shot to the head and and that's a lack of discipline once more so Shelston whilst whilst Jonathan Waddell's just receiving treatment I think he did get a knock to the head and he's not looking very well at the moment yes it's always a, a not a nice thing to see uh, in this really tough sport but accidents do happen nothing malicious in the challenge and I think it's basically just out of precaution that he's in a neck brace and things we've seen him moving his hands arms and legs so that's always a good sign but so as Jonathan Woodell is removed from the field big round of applause from the spectators of Charleston and Oldham it's always a sad part of the game when somebody gets injured seriously just hope that Jonathan Waddell is okay the two captains have been brought together I presume the referee is obviously saying that he's put something on report I don't I obviously didn't see anything there but Well, we'll have to look at the video more closely. So it's going to be quite difficult now. So as Thomas Wandless puts the ball into touch, and just to remind you of the score, it's 12 points to eight in the favour of Oldham. And this is Bingham. Bingham taking it forward. So on with the responsibility now of taking the ball forward is Bothy Andy Booth Thomas Wandless looking to get the ball to Maskell inside pass to Miles but Miles taken well by the Oldham scrambling defence but it's dangerous times for Oldham certainly in good field position as Charleston what can they do can they make the field position pay as Saville goes back to the short side he's looking to chase his own kick but Excellent play from the fullback O'Connor. But Shelston, keen, enthusiastic in the tackle, up quickly on the Oldham side, juggling with the ball. But you can bet within the next play or so that the ball will be in Shelston's 20 because they'll be looking to use this wind and turning Shelston around. Coyle looking to get the ball wide have they got a bit of an overlap they have but Greenwood has to go back in field gets away from the first one and we're on the fifth and last so it looks like a big kick downfield so Coyle so Brad Chatfield will bring the ball back and he runs into field centre field gets up tries to carry on the run and another penalty so certainly a lack of discipline again really difficult to uh, Thomas Wandless puts the ball into touch really strong wind in his face but still manages to make the touchline side Saville what can Saville do Saville will give it to Lockwood Lockwood goes forward but only in as a single runner it should always run in pairs but Sykes was in to tackle him and that's a knock on need to pass off the floor I'm afraid is the order of the day from acting half back if you stand up it gives the man chance to come round
So Charleston not enjoying much possession at the moment. Ianson taking it forward. Sykes darts out of the rook area and gets a, a good quick 10 metres. Coyle in at acting half back, looking to. Oh, both came in extremely well there and it is opposite number Ianson, but both stood up in the tackle. Really strong tackle, but great strength from Ianson not to be knocked down as Merville takes it forward. Last tackle on the 20 metre line. Sykes looks to dab the ball through but Maskell just shepherds the ball and lets it run over the dead ball line so Charleston will restart and that's Maskell again taking it forward well done from Maskell but Ianson's in at the tackle and so is Baines gets onto his knees to affect the quick play of the ball Saville darts out Well, Maskell looks as if he's took a knock to the ribs. Bettinson looking for Lockwood. Lo loses the ball. Yep, knock on. First knock on. Older Medden feed. Baines picks the ball up from the base of the scrum, runs across field. Certainly look forward. Oh, it's a good break. This is David Allen from... Yes, David Allen makes the break. And the substitute. I think it's Neil Roden. Yeah, Allen makes the break. Neil Roden on in support goes under the sticks. And that's breathing space for Oldham. And I think that just came about from the mistake. I think it was Lockwood who knocked the ball on. Uh, the scrum went down. So Charleston, through lack of possession, really, are giving Oldham a chance to build. And they just managed to split the defence there. David Allen's strong second row forward went through. Look for his support, which is on the left-hand side of him through Roden. And Roden strides underneath the sticks. Points to eight in front. Makes no mistake. Alliwell, the person that converts. 18 points to eight. Charleston been starved of a little bit of possession. And when they've had possession, they've not completed the set. Which has given Oldham a chance to build. And that's just what happened there. So Miles. To try and get the game restarted. So Miles puts the ball high. Roden takes the ball on Yango. Ianson. Roden looking to spread the ball wide. And it looks it looks as if they have got some numbers here. Gets away from Ferris, Davis trying to, and it looks like Rob Roberts will go under. Robert Roberts just on the field of play, and that's his first touch. So, extremely good quick hands from the Oldham side there. From the kickoff, which went to the far right hand side of Oldham's line. One tackle in and then they just work the ball to the left hand side of the field and nice swift handling. Just saw the winger Greenwood get free, get away from Ferris. And on his inside was Rob Roberts. And Rob Roberts goes 
just puts the ball down just to the left hand side of the sticks and again with the relatively easy conversion to come well there you go commentator's nightmare from a relatively easy position misses the conversion 22 points to 8 though in Oldham's favour and you would think that the Oldham side are just now starting to take control of the game That's a knock on. No, I cannot believe what the referee's given there. That was a knock on. But there you go. You make your own luck in the game of rugby league. So, still enthusiasm in the hearts of this Charleston side. Still coming up, still moving up forward to meet the Oldham attackers. Roberts goes forward nothing for him can't get the ball away they've clamped it but I can't see what the penalty was. oh Ed I well there you go so it must have been the grapple type thing It's David Allen. David Allen takes the ball forward. Instrumental in the try for Roden. Again, we seem to have Charleston now going through a spate of indiscipline. Roden to Ianson. And he's lost the ball as Ianson. Miles picks it up. seems to be a little bit more urgency in Oldham's mannerisms now as they all move forward Lockwood takes it forward I just think that sometimes the referee just not looking seeing that maybe the Oldham side are a little bit keen and actually moving before the ball's played Lockwood, Lockwood gets the ball away to Bingham Bingham goes forward Still outstanding play from Charleston. Did he play for that? We've got a knock on anyway, I think, and he's just allowed play to go on. Roberts getting the ball to Baines, Baines to Coyle. Coyle just can't get the ball away. Ferris was in, off his wing, stopped the scrum half from getting the ball away, but he does get a penalty. He's tapped the ball and it's Baines. Oh. He did knock on. Yes, he did. It was Littler that knocked on. Savlin acting half back. A penalty given. Thomas Wandless puts the ball into touch. Twenty two points to eight. 
Can Charleston make a game of it by getting some scores on the board? That's a great run from Bart Thompson. So they're in great field position. What can they do here? A good line out as well. That's a penalty. So Savile will feed Bettinson. Bettinson looking to push it wide to Wandless. And the strong pass out there to Sean Emblem. Hit him right on the shoulder. But the Oldham player had stepped out of the line and was almost on him before he received the ball anyway. Would have probably been better paid to stick hold of it. But there you go, Sykes now just short of the halfway line looking for Roden. Roden to Allen. It's Coyle. Coyle comes back and looks for the inside pass and gets it away to the supporting player with Roden looking to come left. They've got numbers on this left-hand side. It's a long ball out, but the cover seems to manage and scramble across. Good defence from Charleston, and that's the last tackle. So it's an handover. Maskell trying to trying to get some yardage, some quick yardage away from the rook. Lockwood, Lockwood trying to charge through, gets almost up to the 20 metre line, but it's strong, compact defence from Oldham, not allowing them to do that. Savile darts off from acting half back. We are actually on the 20 metre line now. This is Bingham, Bingham trying to go forward, but unceremoniously dumped to the floor it's Thomas Wandless that puts the ball downfield and that's Greenwood who comes in field and takes the ball off O'Connor O'Connor using Lockwood because he knew that he was offside Lockwood couldn't touch him and that's Richard Merville O'Connor trying to link uses the chip over the top and encouraging Onyango to chase Maskell was exceptional there but pushed into touch so the kick chase was good Maskell although he did extremely well and avoided the first defender was out muscled and pushed into touch Alden will get the head and feed at the scrum and they are now you know in a position where they have taken control of the game but it's taken a long time That's Roden. In acting half back is Sykes and Baines. That's Davis who gets across. Good defence from Gareth, Gareth Davis. Roden, short ball, and yes, even from our commentary position, you could see with his body movement that the ball was going forward. Maskell yes and I'm pleased to see that just over the other side of the field that Johnny Woodell's come back uh, after being carried off the field I'm sure that the medical staff did extremely well and uh, everything was of, as of a precaution but it's always nice to see players um, just coming back and sitting in the stand it means that they're okay 
And that's Bart Thompson taking it forward. Savile jumps out. Gareth Davis gets the ball. But Roden's in at the tackle. Savile to Crowther. Crowther going forward. He makes people tackle him, does Tom? He did knock on, actually. Little chip over the top, played at the ball. He's played at it, so is it... He's knock on. First knock on, so whose feed will this be? It's Charleston's feed. 22-8 the score still then to Oldham. Thomas Wandless looking to get a long ball out there to Potter. And a penalty given. So ball stealing again from Oldham. A little there. Chip into touch from Thomas Wandless. That's a great tackle. Absolutely superb tackle. And this is Andy Booth. Andy Booth going forward. It trundles up and takes Charleston. That's a kick on the third tackle. It goes into touch. So it's only the third tackle. So Charleston just losing the the way a bit. In good field position to try and give the ball a little bit of air. That's certainly what uh, the centre Gareth Davis was insinuating by his gestures. But Craig Miles decided to opt for the short side and the little chip over trying to catch the Oldham team asleep. But... The ball just ran into touch, and so as it is, Oldham bringing the ball away, and about 18 metres or so away from their own line as Roden gets the ball, and the referee giving a spate of penalties and pulling Savile and Bettinson of the Charleston team for a little word with him. Surely Roden will uh, will use the wind, and he has done. Just security and safety first. Just pop the ball, make sure it hits the touch. It's a good run. It's a great tackle from Lee Bettinson. Great tackle. Low took the man straight down. That's Golden. Golden driving hard, but equally met by Booth and by Lockwood. And as Roden takes it forward, uses Coyle. Coyle shows the dummy and makes the half break. And this is O'Connor. Roberts in at first man, taking the ball across. Roden organising things from first man with Merville there, but it's Merville comes on the short ball, drops it. And Chatfield picks it up. And this is the other winger, Ferris. Chatfield once more so the two wingers just giving their forwards a break yes they did lift him up but they didn't actually put him to the floor I think sometimes referees could use um, the judgement a little bit better than that the players obviously realised that his legs had come up didn't actually put him to the floor Savile to Lockwood Lockwood going forward on his own Three men in the tackle. And that's been the difference, I think. Shelson not allowed to play the ball quickly. This is Booth. Booth go, goes forward, but the Oldham line speed is pretty quick. Savile once again. Almost caught at acting half-back. The man going round. Will, um, 
Thomas Wandless. Look. Short ball to Miles. Miles comes back inside and almost gets there. Bettinson looking to Booth. Booth going forward. Tries to push the first man out of the way. It's the floor. Trying to affect the quick play of the ball. The ball's going to go back. Is it not? It's not going to. It's going to come to the right hand side. Bettinson the kick forward again. And it's a repeat set gained by Shelston. So, enterprising play from the amateur outfit. Certainly not giving up the ghost. So from the dropout, just not negotiating it properly, Ferris, and unfortunately the ball bounced just in front of him because it's not round and it will bounce awkwardly at times will the rugby league football, and it did in that instance, and it beat the winger, and it went into touch. So Oldham get a penalty for the scrum breaking up before the ball was out Rob Roberts took the penalty quickly and this is Coyle another penalty Baines charges forward Suck quite a few of the Charleston players in. Will they play fast and quick to this left hand side? It looks as if, yes, it's a longish ball. Merville, Merville gets away from Davis and gets away from Bettison, does he? No, well done, Lee Bettison. Just drags his shorts and pulls him down. And the young lad's hurt. Yeah, he regains his feet, but it looks as if he's got um, if he's got a bad knee, a knee problem. Coyle comes to the left hand side. Roden, Roden looking for the short ball, but it's he's dropped it. So still the score: twenty-two points to eight. I think Charleston have been absolutely magnificent today. Playing against a strong and very physical Oldham side. They've been absolutely tremendous. A credit to the village, a credit to the coaching staff, a credit to all the supporters that have travelled to watch him this afternoon. Booth takes the ball up, drops it, Baines picks it up. And that's Wayne Kerr back on the field. So Oldham through Coyle. In an acting half back. This is good play. O'Connor, knock on. Yes, it's definitely a knock on. Yes, it's a knock on. And the referee blew up pretty quickly. Obviously, no advantage. So, head and feed will go to Charleston. Lee Bettinson leaving the field. Is he? He can't leave the field at a scrum. <laughs> so, therefore, he's got to come back. Lee Maskell to put in. Gareth Davis. Another penalty. Sometimes you think to yourselves that you've come to see players play rugby and not referees give penalties for only the slightest of things. Oh, great work. And then knocks on. Ball goes into touch. I think he loses possession actually, trying to get the ball away perhaps. 
when he perhaps would have been better off just keeping hold of the ball, keeping possession and building from there. However, see you, mate. So Roden looking to get Oldham away. Gareth Davis can Gareth Davis get away. He's quick as Gareth Davis. But the, the Oldham players are, are also equally as quick in this instant. So what can what can Charleston do? This is Miles. Miles going across. Is he gonna get the ball away? Gets the ball away. And Shelson have knocked on. So all of them get possession. This is Rowden. But even so, at 22 points to wait, and as I was saying earlier, I think Shelston have given a good account of themselves. They've certainly opened the eyes of the, some of the Oldham supporters who really don't know this side from West Yorkshire. But they've done extremely well in their respective league and they've done more than, than anybody ever expected here today. They've been absolutely outstanding both in defence and in attack. And I think the only difference has been the physical presence and maybe a little bit of fitness. They've certainly matched Oldham in every other department. They've been in as, as enthusiastic as the uh, opposition. They've been absolutely brilliant. There's been some fantastic performances from certain individuals. And the referee gives yet another penalty. I think he actually pulled Andy Booth to the floor. By his head. Affecting the grapple tackle, if you like. So, Carl Spencer, in at acting half-back, looks to Saville. Saville looking to get it to Craig Miles. And Craig Miles couldn't have been expected to catch that. It was a, a really hard and strong pass. It was not into his bread basket, as you used to say. It was way up, up the shoulder level. And, unfortunately, Craig couldn't take it in. So we're into the dying minutes of this game. A good offload and good support play by Tommy Golden. Coyle in at acting halfback. Coyle looking to get Rob Roberts on the front foot and does so, but good tackling. And Oldham. Charging forward again and making it just short of the 20-metre line. Coyle once more in at acting half-back, looking to his right-hand side. Uses Roberts as a foil. It's Coyle, his brother, gets it away to Onyango. Finds himself with a bit of space. And good quick hands to the left-hand side of Charleston's defence. And Onyango goes in for his second try of the afternoon. And if the game was in doubt... It's not now as Onyango takes the score to 26 points to eight. Charleston have not managed to breach the Oldham line and score any points in this second half, but that doesn't take anything away from the way in which they've played. Difficult conditions for goal kickers and especially as far out as this young man is. He's hit it sweetly, but it's just missed. And the supporters of Charleston are still shouting on their team, and rightly so. They must be well proud of the players from the small village in West Yorkshire.
So as the light begins to fade here in Oldham and the game comes to a close, we just wonder if maybe Shalston could just give their supporters something to cheer about and maybe get over the try line in the dying minutes. It would be very nice if that happened. But Oldham looking to spread the ball again and starting to find cracks and defensive leaks, but what good scrambling defence from Charleston getting across and stopping Greenwood from making any progress absolute superb work and credit to um, to the way that Charleston have been coached and the fitness of this amateur outfit they have been absolutely immense and look at the Oldham uh, players now congratulating the Charleston lads they know that they've been in a tough game they know that they've been outplayed in some of uh, some portions of this game Charleston were on top certainly in the first half when they got back to 12 points to 8 but the strength the superior fitness and certainly the professional uh, approach of the Oldham side just paid dividends in the end so it's all that Charleston could have asked for was to give their all and give Oldham a game and I think that the Oldham spectators the players and certainly the members of the directors board will see that Charleston were immense today it's been a credit to the amateur game of rugby league well done Charleston but congratulations to Oldham and we wish them all the best in the next round yes wonderful to see the supporters of Charleston who've travelled across the Pennines on a bitterly cold day they're standing up and giving their players a rapturous round of applause as they come off the field and thoroughly deserve it.